Hello, welcome back to another video where we are continuing the concept of abstraction. In last video, we went over one way of achieving abstraction via abstract classes and abstract methods, which allows us to achieve partial to full abstraction. Today, we will focus on interfaces, which is a way of achieving complete abstraction. All right, what is an interface? Since Java doesn't have a concept of multiple inheritance like languages like C++, Java introduced a concept of interface. In Java, classes can implement multiple interfaces, and it allows us to achieve complete abstraction. Interfaces are very similar to abstract classes except that it only contains constants and abstract methods. Well, actually this changed a little bit since Java 8, and I will explain that later in the video. All right, let's do an example and see how interfaces work. All right, let's create an interface of a phone. So you can think of an interface as a contract, uh, things that a contract will need to fill out in order for that contract to be fully completed. So for a phone, we are going to say that any basic phone should be able to make calls and send text. So we are going to have a make call method and send text. Now we're going to create a class that will implement these methods. So let's create an Android phone class. To use the interface, we use the implement keyword. And over here, we are implementing the phone interface. Now, if I hover over this, you're seeing it's being underlined as right, and it's saying I need to implement these methods. So interface forces us to implement or fill out the contract. So let's fill out these methods. So over here, I'm just going to print, it out, print out a message saying making call from Android. And let me just copy paste this and do the same thing here. And I will say sending text from Android. And let me fix the spelling of this as well. So let me just rename this to Android phone. All right, let's create another class and we'll create a class for iPhone this time. And iPhone will also implement the phone interface. All right, let's fill out these messages. So we are going to say, do the same thing. So let me actually just paste it here, making call from iPhone. And for send text, we're just gonna say sending text from iPhone. Okay, let's test this out. So I'm gonna head over to main and let's create a new phone. Let's do an Android phone first, equals new Android phone. And let's say that Android phone is making call and it can send text as well. And we'll do the same thing. Let's create a new phone. Let's call it my iPhone equals new iPhone. And we are going to do the same thing we are going to send text and make call. All right, there you go. So you can see making call from Android and sending text from Android. And here we are sending text from iPhone and making call from iPhone. Okay, let's further expand this. Uh, let's create an interface of a GPS. And we'll keep this simple. Let's just have one method called set destination. Now in Java, we can implement multiple interfaces, but can only extend from one class. This is one of the benefits or point of interfaces. So let's implement this interface in both of our phones. Let's just start off with the Android phone first. So we are going to implement the GPS interface and let's implement the set destination method. So since we're using uh, Android, we're going to be using Google Maps. So let's just set the destination using Google Maps. And we'll say we're just setting it to some restaurant. Let's do the same thing for the iPhone. So we are going to implement the same interface, GPS. And let's implement the set destination method. And since we're using iPhone, we're going to be using Google Ma uh, Apple Maps. So let's say using Apple Maps and setting destination 
to some restaurant. Okay, let's test this out. So we're going to head over to main. And now we have to make slight changes. We, Since we're using phone here, the phone interface, we don't have to set destination method inside the phone interface. So we only have make call and send text. So in this case, we're going to use Android phone class. And now we should have access to set destination. And we can do the same thing for this. We're using iPhone. And for my iPhone, we can set the destination as well. All right, let's run this. All right, there you go. So we're using Google Maps for the Android. And for iPhone, we're using Apple Maps. One important thing I want to go over for interfaces are the fall methods. In Java 8, Java started supporting the fall methods where we can define and provide implementation of methods. There were several reasons for this, but the main reason was that with interfaces, we always needed to provide an implementation and classes that were implementing it. If we ever added a new method in that interface, we were forced to implement that method in all the classes that were using that interface. In order to avoid this, the fall methods were introduced in Java 8. Let's do a quick example. Let's say in the phone interface, I have a new method that connects to Wi-Fi. Now I'm forced that you can already see two related problems. If I go over to Android phone, it's forcing me to implement this method. And same thing for the iPhone. Even though connect to Wi-Fi has the same implementation for both iPhone and Android. So to avoid this, I can add this default keyword. And I need to now provide an implementation here. So I can say system connect to Wi-Fi. Let's test this out. Let's head over to main. And let's do the same thing for Android phone. Now I've access to connect to Wi-Fi. And I should have the same access for iPhone as well. And if I run this, I'm going to get the same output. Connect to Wi-Fi for the iPhone and connect to Wi-Fi for Android. So default methods can be very useful, especially when the implementation would be same across all the classes that are implementing that interface. That's pretty much it for interfaces. It's a pretty important concept in Java as it is used quite heavily, especially when designing API or microservices. It's very popular in Spring Data or Spring Boot. When we get to advanced topics of designing REST services and developing our own web API, we will see the true usage or importance of this. If you take a look at map, that is part of Java util package. It is also an interface that is used by, that is implemented by hash maps, linked hash map, and tree map. So we have new hash map. And if I go to, let me import this. And if I go to the map interface, you can see this is an interface and it is implemented by HashMap as well. So if I go to HashMap, you can see if I scroll a little bit on top, you can see it's implementing the map interface and same thing by linked HashMap. And if I go to linked HashMap and scroll a little bit on top as well, we'll see it's implementing the map interface as well. So interfaces really helps us structure and design code in a really neat manner. And it's pretty much a contract that forces a classes to fill out in order to fully complete that contract. So to recap, we went over what interfaces were and how to write them and how to implement them as well. We went over multiple inheritance as well by implementing multiple interfaces. And we also went over an important feature that was introduced in Java 8 for interfaces, the default methods. Hopefully this video helped you guys out, get a better understanding of interfaces. And if it did, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video where we will go over the last important concept left of object-oriented programming and that is polymorphism. All right, take care.